Ladies and gentlemen, as the prologue for National Day Parade 2015 comes to a close, we embark on the story of Singapore with Chapter 1 Beginnings. Let us travel back in time to witness the legendary arrival of Sang Nila Utama and his royal entourage who sought safe refuge on the island Tamasik and called it Singapura. Sangnila Utama, who was said to have been a powerful ruler of the Srivijaya Empire of Sumatra, was on a quest to conquer new lands to rule. With his fleet of ships, the legendary Sangnila arrived at the Riau Islands, where he saw in the distance an island known as Tamasik. According to legend, it was on our land that he spotted a lion, which in Malay is called Singa, thereby giving us our name, Singapura or the Lion City. All were drawn by the potential offered by the island as a trading route. Immigrants came from far and wide. Traders, coolies, scholars all braved hard conditions to seek adventure and opportunity. in Singapore. Buoyed by hope and opportunity, they pressed on and found great success, building fortunes as businessmen and traders. They then brought in other members from their homeland and helped these new arrivals settle in to work towards a better future. They brought with them the culture of their homelands, leading to the beginnings of cultural diversity in Singapore. As a community, the people worked to build a better future. There were struggles and setbacks. Life was hard, but the spirit of a nation began to take root, a people banding together for survival and prosperity.
Soon, people from other lands arrived on our shores. Arab traders, Indian businessmen, and people from Malaya. The start of our multi-ethnic, multicultural society. With the arrival of Sir Stamford Raffles and the rise of Singapore as a trading port, merchants and traders flocked to the island. They sank roots here, building a multi-ethnic, multi-religious home for themselves. Sir Stamford Raffles arrived in Singapore in 1819. He was drawn to the island's strategic position at the southern tip of the Malay Peninsula. It was the ideal halfway point for sea trade from British India to China, possessing a natural deep harbour, freshwater supplies and timber for repairing ships. Raffles set foot and worked to develop a township. He also saw to the education of the people, setting up an institution of higher learning known then as the Singapore Institution. Singapore had a population of a thousand when Raffles arrived. Fifty years later, by 1869, the population had grown to 100,000 with immigrants arriving to be a part of the exciting development of this new island. Many tumultuous years follow as Singapore strives to find its own voice, to formulate an identity before finally gaining independence in 1965. Before our eyes, the Victoria Theatre clock tower takes shape, a symbol of the passage of time as the nation moves forward towards the moment of independence in 1965.